Hey everybody, welcome back to another brand new video. It's Throwback Thursday and today we're going back to 1987 and we are opening up a rack box of 1987 tops. Now we have done 87 tops one other time on the channel, but that was way back in early January of 2019. So it's almost been two years since we've done 87 tops. The last time we did it, it was a wax box with 36 packs. Now we're doing a rack box. You can see here, these rack boxes have 24 packs with a grand total of, I think it's 45 cards per rack pack. Let's check it out. It's basically the equivalent of 72 packs or three wax boxes, if I'm not mistaken. So we're going to be opening this up and looking for all the good rookie cards, most notably guys like Barry Bonds, Barry Larkin, Bo Jackson. There's a Mark McGuire Gold Cup in here, which is pretty darn cool. Jose Canseco Gold Cup. We'll be looking for all of those. And also, they've got these really cool inserts on the top of these packs, which are exclusive to rack packs. They are the 1986 All-Star Game uh, commemorative cards. So we'll be looking at all of those. Let's get started and see what we can find. Rack packs, not around anymore. They used to be really easy for people in the know to figure out exactly which rack pack to buy because you could look at the front of the rack pack and easily pinpoint um, exactly where the good cards were. If you knew, for example, what card preceded a Barry Bonds rookie card, you could easily find that every time. One thing I hate about rack packs is what you're seeing right now. It's opening them. Some rack packs you can just tear right down the back and they'll come all out at once. However, these ones obviously are going to be a little more difficult. So here we go, 1987 tops. Let's see what we can find. This was a really cool design. A lot of people that collected during the 80s always say that 87 tops is amongst the top designs that they've uh, ever collected. It has that nice wood grain border in the background, very reminiscent of 1962 tops which was a set that a lot of our dads collected, or maybe if you're still collecting, maybe you were lucky enough to collect cards in 62 and still have them. I know a lot of kids in 62 collected cards and put them in their bike spokes. How about this one? Hall of Famer Yogi Berra, front and center on the uh, mound right there. Looks like he's, everyone else is serious, but Yogi's doing his thing, telling a Yogiism, I'm sure. He had tons of those, like when you come to a fork in the road, take it. Or what, the game is 90% mental and 50% physical or something like that. He had a lot of those. If you have any good yogisms, drop them down in the comments section. I'd love to read through all those. There's Mike Schmidt. He's a Hall of Famer. That's a nice one. I like that one a lot. Let's see what we can find in our next pack. By the way, we're giving all these cards away. That's why there's no sponsor for this video. If you'd like to win every single card from this box simply leave a comment and make sure you're subscribed you do have to be subscribed uh, so hit that button and uh, i check that so the only way i can see it is you have to be publicly subscribed by turning on your subscriptions in your settings you go to settings and toggle the switch to the on button to, to allow others to see who you're subscribed to there's a roger clemens all-star card mike laga I don't know, something seems weird about this card. He's wearing like a pink jersey. It looks very poorly photoshopped. Take a look at that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what's going on here, but this card, I don't know why I never realized this before. It looks very photoshopped. I don't, I don't know. That one just kind of stands out to me. Maybe it's the pink jersey that was a giveaway, but Eddie Murray's a Hall of Famer. Great switch hitter there for many, many years, mostly with the Orioles. Ron Kittle, without the glasses there in his Yankees uniform. Teddy Higuera, all-star card. There's a grand total of 22 of these cards, so you could possibly get the entire set of those today if we are lucky enough to not have too many repeats. There's 24 packs in this box. There's Tony Gwynn. He is a Hall of Famer, one of the best of all time. And Vince Coleman, the speedster Vince Coleman. He's still over 100 bases a year. Look at those stolen bases. 145 stolen bases in what's that double a just crazy stuff you don't see that anymore and i don't know if we'll ever see that again at least um until the kind of like the strategy of the game shifts nowadays the stolen bases a guy that has like 30 is going to be amongst the league leaders if not lead the league back then in the uh early 80s mid 80s you had guys like vince coleman and ricky henderson stealing 
over 100 bases a season. And then even in the early 90s, we had guys like Kenny Lofton getting those steals up there into the 60s or 70s. There's Don Sutton. He's a Hall of Famer. George Bell was a nice player back in the day. Tommy Hurst, still looking for my guy, Barry Bonds. Ed Lynch, an absolutely terrible card. Now, I'm wondering if he's doing that face on purpose. Talking to Frank DePino, who I think we might find in this set. Uh, he sat down with us during a 1985 Topps box break and said sometimes he would just mess with the photographer by doing a terrible face or something completely off the wall. Andy Van Slyke, my favorite player growing up, used to love that card right there. So I think DePino said in one of his cards he went and put on a first baseman's glove because, you know, that's not supposed to – he's not supposed to have one of those being a pitcher. Pretty interesting stuff. So I'm wondering if DePino was purposely burping in the middle of that photo or something like that because that's just an absolutely terrible photo. And uh, if that's the best photo the photographer could get of Ed Lynch, I'm wondering what the other ones look like. I'm, I'm sure they probably snap a few of them just in case the first one doesn't turn out. There's a Nolan Ryan. Nice one right there. Hall of Famer Nolan Ryan. Look at all those years, all of those strikeouts, all of those wins. Also had a lot of losses, but he played on some bad teams. Nolan Ryan never won a Cy Young Award. What's that all about? There's Jack Morris, Steve Carlton, Hall of Famer right there. You're going to see lots of Hall of Famers throughout 87 tops. Unfortunately, I wasn't collecting in 1987. I got in a little bit later on. 1989 was the year I started. There's Tony Gwynn. So I remember seeing these cards, but I never really got a chance to open too many packs of these. Every now and then you could find leftover packs from previous years on the shelves just kind of like nowadays it's not uncommon to maybe find a pack of oh i don't know 20 it used to be common to find packs of like 2018 top series one on the shelves at walmart earlier this year before the pandemic and stuff like that but now you can't find anything anywhere really john crux on the back of that one that is uh not really his rookie card his rookie card is 86 tops traded but still his first regular issue tops card as I fight with these wrappers. I don't know exactly what these cards cost back in 1987. I think the wax packs were 35 cents. I would imagine these were probably about, oh, I don't know, maybe around a dollar, maybe 99 cents for a rack pack, which is a pretty darn good deal. Jim Rice, imagine being able to get for like 45 cards now for 99 cents. I mean, heck, nowadays, there's Don Manley, great card right there. Nowadays, for that amount of cards, you're going to pay like 20 bucks for a blaster box for the same amount of cards. Tony Gwynn, Hall of Famer, our second time seeing him. Still looking out for Barry Bonds. There's Doug Drabeck, rookie card. He, of course, won a Cy Young. Bruce Suter, Hall of Famer. Drabeck also had a son, Kyle Drabeck, who was a pretty highly thought of prospect, but had some shoulder issues and uh, haven't heard much of Kyle Drabeck for, uh, I don't know, like five, six years now. There's Ozzy Smith. Another Hall of Famer, there he is, Barry Bonds, the rookie card that I love so much. If you don't know, I have a collection of 87 Toss Barry Bonds cards of hundreds of this card. Uh, literally, whenever I go to card shows or anywhere like that, if I see this card, I will pick it up for a dollar. A very nice one right there, Barry Bonds. Let's throw this in a card saver for whoever's going to get this bad boy. Now, this card used to be... Before I throw it in there, used to, or not used to be, people still do this. They say, oh, it's an error because it's a misprint. It's missing part of the three. You can see that lower left uh, portion of the three is missing. That's actually on every single card, so it's not an error card. It's just one of those little uncorrected printing errors. Barry Bones rookie card coming your way. Maybe send it off to PSA, get it graded PSA 10. I'm not exactly sure what it goes for, but I would not be surprised if a PSA 1087 tops Barry Bonds goes for upwards of around $100. Which is not too shabby. There you go, right out of the pack. In a card saver ready for you to send off to PSA for whoever gets these. Again, all you have to do is leave a comment in the video. You can tell me one of your favorite yogiisms, but you do have to be subscribed. You can also tell me what your favorite card was that we found today. Some repeats right now. We'll go a little faster through the repeats. Um, what else do we have? Jose De Leon, there is a Frank Williams, Steve Fire Ovid, or I don't even know how you say that, but that's a pretty cool name. I don't remember hearing much about him growing up. There's Whitey Herzog, so we're getting into some doubles now. I think that's our second Herzog All-Star Game, Paul Molder. So I'm guessing for the All-Star Game cards, I'm not exactly sure which subjects they chose, but I would imagine that it, it is the 18 starting players from each team. 
the managers from each team and also the quote-unquote team captains. They used to put um, captainship positions in the All-Star game where it was like an old Hall of Famer or something like that that kind of was the team captain, maybe like the exchange lineup card or something like that. I'm not sure what their duties encompassed, but I think we'll be seeing a couple of those. There's Ozzie Smith, second time seeing that one. How about another Barry Bonds for you? Two Barry Bonds within the span of a couple packs. The indicators for that, if we see any front-facing cards of John Henry Harrison, Armis, Toby Hera, Ozzie Smith, Jerry Reed, Frank Pastor, or Giants leaders, it might give way to a Barry Bonds. Right after the Barry Bonds is a Roy Lee Jackson. So what people would like to do back in the day is they would look for a Roy Lee Jackson on the back of one of these. If they'd see Roy Lee Jackson, they would know a Barry Bonds was there. Obviously, the Barry Bonds was not a hugely valued card back in the day. Heck, it's still, you can pick it up for usually a dollar or so, which I think is absolutely crazy. Uh, paying like a buck for the rookie card of the all-time home run king, although that's widely disputed. A lot of people don't consider him to be their home run king. There's Daryl Strawberry. A lot of people still think that Hank Aaron is the all-time home run king. So, Doc Gooden, we found two of the best rookie that you can find in my book. Um, still looking. There's another Tony Gwynn. Still looking for the Mark McGuire Gold Cup card, which a lot of people misidentify as a rookie card. Always kind of... Uh, makes me just not shake my head, but um, I don't know. Makes me a little bit upset when I buy a mystery pack or something like that, and it guarantees rookie cards. And one of the quote unquote rookie cards is a Mark McGuire 87 gold cup card. I'm like, nope, that is not a rookie card. That is his second, I guess, quote unquote, second year card. Second Tops card, 85 Tops USA team card is Mark McGuire's actual rookie card. So that's. A common mistake. Also, we see that from time to time with Jose Canseco's card. People calling it the 87 Tops his rookie card. But in all actuality, 86 Tops traded as a rookie. There's a nice Wally Joyner Gold Cup. Getting into some fresh cards. Ryan Sandberg, Gary Carter. Jim Leland manager card. That's technically, I think, his rookie card. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's 86 Tops. I can't exactly remember. Jim Leland, of course, one of the great managers of the 80s and 90s, led the Pirates to three division titles, ultimately ended up winning a World Series with the Marlins there. And uh, I think he ended his managerial career with the Colorado Rockies. But I think that Jim Leland should be a Hall of Famer. Of course, that could be because I'm from near the Pittsburgh area. So you might say that you're a little biased, but I think a lot of people think that Jim Leland's one of the best managers of all time, and he probably could still be managing, but I think he kind of had his fill, he had the ultimate success there in winning a World Series, and uh, decided to just spend time with uh, probably his family here. Now there's a Carlton Fisk, Alan Trammell, back-to-back -back Hall of Famers right there. Robin Yount, another Hall of Famer, pretty good pack so far. Uh, three Hall of Famers. So Carl Yastrzemski turned back the clock. I don't really consider that to be like a major hit. I, those cards when I was a kid, we always just kind of threw those aside. Not really even, we didn't even really consider them to be like real cards. But still pretty cool. And the rest of the pack, unfortunately, doesn't really have much at all. There's a nice Julio Franco. I used to really like his batting stance as a kid. Would mimic that all the time. Let's see what we've got coming up next. From pack number, oh, I don't know, maybe nine of 24. So leading things off, we've got a Tony Bernazard. Now there's the turn back the clock cards once more. Pretty cool that Tops would throw it back to kind of talk a little bit about cards that maybe you didn't have a chance to collect when you were a kid, like the 72 Clemente. I don't think I ever had that card and still don't have that card in my collection. Probably need to start tracking down some Clementes. Lee Smith is a Hall of Famer. So is Dave Winfield. Tim Raines, another Hall of Famer. Ozzie Guillen, second year card. Andre Dawson, another Hall of Famer. So we're getting a lot of Hall of Famers in here. Not a ton of value to a lot of these guys. Pete Rose um, actually might be the most valuable of all those I don't want to call them B-level Hall of Famers, but they're not very valuable. They're always considered guys like um, Tim Raines and Andre Dawson. If you used to go by Beckett pricing back in the day, which pretty much everybody did, Beckett was like the baseball card Bible, like pretty much everybody just considered it to be the gospel. Whatever it said, that was the price that it was worth. I feel like guys like Tim Raines, Jack Morris, Lee Smith, those guys, a lot of times were only worth like 10 to 15 cents which is just slightly over what a common card was worth. There's the Mike Laga terribly 
Um, Photoshop card once more. Pete Cavilla, Gold Cup card. He used to strike out an awful lot. Mickey Tendleton. He's another guy that used to hit some dingers. Strike out a bit. Tom Lawless, Mr. Batflip himself. Never had any power. Look at those numbers. <laughs> One career home run in five years there. But he had a home run in the playoffs and absolutely bat flipped the heck out of his bat. If you uh, need some entertainment, watch uh, Tom Lawless do a bat flip on YouTube. Type in Tom Lawless bat flip. It's probably, if there's a Hall of Fame for bat flips, that would be in there. All right, next up, we have our next pack. On the back, we have a Dan Quisenberry and um, Ken Howell. And also, we have a John Denny. No big names right there. Let's get to it and see what we can find. Thank you very much for being here on this episode of Throwback Thursday. There's a Ricky Henderson leading things off. We've got Johnny Ray in here as well. Eric Davis, his rookie card is 85 tops. There's Quisenberry doing his crazy sidearm Delivery. Ted Simmons is a Hall of Famer. I feel like many, uh, almost all the time, in most sets, he was just a common. Never really considered him to be uh, like a superstar or anything like that. Ozzie Smith was always worth a little bit. I feel like Ozzie Smith cards were worth about 40 cents back in the day, something around that uh, level. Frank Viola, John Franco. We've got Earl Hershiser, Joe Necro, not a Hall of Famer. Had a nice long career. A lot of people mistakenly might think that he is because of how many years he played. But that's Phil Necro that is the Hall of Famer, his older brother. Here we go with the next pack. Let's see what we can find. Eric Shaw is on the back. I always used to mispronounce his name, and probably a lot of you guys did as well. Probably used to call him Eric Show. That's what we called him. Back then, we didn't have cable, so... If I didn't, um, you know, see them playing or hear their names in the play-by-play, -play, I would mispronounce it. And how about this pack is just completely eluding me for being open. I don't even have an opening. Probably should have had my box cutter down here or a pair of scissors. Um, but I don't. There, I think we finally got it. Hopefully there's not. <laughs> this is absolutely brutal. So it's like you're seeing me wrestle with an alligator or something here absolutely could not get that one done i would rather just rip them open rather than having to do that but ricky henderson once more well if there's if there's any good cards in that one hopefully they're not too damaged maybe the cards on the the back i don't think they're that that bad at all pat corrales jerry naren joe price here comes the hit it's roger clemens quote unquote hit because that's all you really have in 87 tops is those insert cards to look out for, those all-star. There wasn't anything else in terms of inserts in 87 tops back in the day. Inserts started really being a thing in the early 90s. I feel like a lot of that is Don Russ's fault back in uh, 1991. Don Russ started putting those elite cards in their packs at a rate of, uh, oh, I don't even know, probably one in every three cases, which is one in every 60 boxes. There was 10,000 of each elite card printed, and a lot of people were buying Don Russ, and Don, you know, Don Russ kind of set the uh, set everybody, all the other competitors, Tops, Score, Fleer, Upper Deck, they all got on the uh, board as well, putting inserts in there and give people something to chase, which is, you know, pretty cool idea. There's Phil Necro, spoke about him earlier, Hall of Famer. Ryan Sandberg, another Hall of Famer, used to love that card. Rangers leaders, there's Bobby Valentine on the mound making a pitching change. Dave Winfield's a Hall of uh, Famer. There's a Raphael Palmera rookie card. He's had a large fall from grace. Once a surefire, no doubt, Hall of Famer, but um, went before Congress during the steroid investigation when steroids was a, a big thing in baseball and testified before Congress, waved his finger in the congressional leader's face and said, I've not taken PEDs, period, and even like jammed his finger on the table for emphasis. And then like, oh, I don't know, what was it? Like two weeks later, he comes up and tested positive for PEDs. So that was unfortunately the nail in the coffin for his um, Hall of Fame campaign there. Uh, he fell off the ballot pretty quickly. Rafael Palmeiro, definitely deserving of a Hall of Fame, uh, but just based solely on the numbers. With over 500 home runs and 3,000 hits, there's Bruce Suter and Mike Schmidt, Burt Blyleven. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, this was a while ago, what was it, like 2003? 
or something like that. This happened. I can't remember exactly when. It was in the 2000s, though. I believe that Palmera threw his teammate Miguel Tejada under the bus and said that he got it from him. And Tejada, I think, said it was a vitamin B supplement. I don't, I don't know. Um, but hopefully now, I mean, it's not still uh, completely 100% clean, but the game is very much cleaned up. Every now and then you still see guys being banned for PEDs. And most of the time it's for um, guys that are just taking a supplement that they don't even know has a banned substance in it. We've got an upside down Chris Speck. I don't know why that's upside down, but um, kind of weird. Usually an upside down card, at least in today's industry, usually means you have something good coming up. Hey, there's there he is, Frank DePino. I like that one a lot. I must want to put that one aside. Frank DePino sat down with us about a month ago in Syracuse, New York, to uh, go through a box of 80, uh, 85 tops. Really cool guy. Really knows a lot about baseball and uh, can tell you stories for days and days. I don't know why the heck those cards are upside down. These obviously aren't certs. There's manager Pete Rose. Kind of cool. Back in 86, Pete Rose was a player manager, so he managed the Reds, and he also played for the team. And we haven't seen that in a long time. There's Mike Schmidt, Hall of Famer. If we find that Pete Rose again, I'll go back and look at his stats in 86 and see how he did, how he fared in 86. I can't remember if 86 was his last year, if it was 87, but that was near the end of his career, and he was kind of transitioning from his playing days into his managing days. Unfortunately for Pete Rose, he made some bad decisions and was gambling on the games that he was managing in as a manager. That's a big no-no, so he received a lifetime ban. There's Jim Rice. Nice one right there. Steve Sachs was a multi-year all-star. Kurt Gibson, of course, a hero in the playoffs there. 1988 World Series Game 1 had one of the best home runs of all time. Ruben Sierra rookie card. Used to be a nice card back in the day. Kyle Ripken Jr. He's a Hall of Famer. Daryl Strawberry pulled his autograph last night out of Stadium Club. That was a nice break last night. Paul Molitor started off kind of slow uh, with the first case. Not a lot of major hits in terms of, uh, you know, just like great autographs. But then in the middle of that break, it just got crazy with, uh, I don't know, a run of about a half case of just amazing hits after amazing hits. It was a... Uh, Luis Robert rookie card auto, and then after that we had like an Edgar Martinez box topper auto. Then right after that, there's like a Mike Trout auto, a Kyle Lewis auto, Ronald Acuna Jr. auto. They just didn't stop coming, Chipper Jones. So we'll be doing some more Stadium Club from 2020, the brand new release, on Sunday. Probably starting right around dinner time here on the East Coast. We've got a grand total of, oh, I think it's... Four more cases to do. There's George Brett. This is a nice run. A triple Hall of Famer run. George Brett, Goose Gossage, and Kirby Puckett all in a row. Really cool stuff right there. Always like it when you get a lot of Hall of Famers in a pack. Andre Dawson and Dusty Baker. So the count right now for the rookie cards. We got two Barry Bonds rookie cards. Zero Barry Larkin rookie cards. Zero Mark McGuire's. And zero Jose Canseco's. I'm hoping we can find them in this last little stack of cards we have a grand total of it looks like four packs left after this one if we find them that's awesome if we don't find them go back and watch the 87 how about a third barry bonds rookie card three and it's the giants leaders card that gives way to it jerry reed pastori and there it is Roy Lee jackson coming up right after him right yep so you can see the cards are put into the pack the very same way all the time very, very nice. This is not a baseball card exchange authenticated sealed box. It's just a box that I picked up off of eBay for I forget what I paid. 30, 40 bucks. There's Wade Boggs. Mark McGuire. Very nice. I forgot his gold cup is 88. I might have said gold cup card before. Jose Caseco's got the gold cup. Mark McGuire, first tops card. Used to love this card as a kid. A lot of us uh Used to collect McGuire, especially back in like the uh, late 90s, 1998, he was doing his thing. That's a great card right there. That's his first card in an Oakland Athletics uniform. So a lot of people mistakenly think that is his rookie card. Back in, there's a nice Mike Schmidt. There's Pete Rose once again. Back in the uh, 80s, though, uh, they didn't put rookie card emblems on the logos 
or the logos on there. You can see Pete Rose was winding down his career 86, only had a 219 batting average, 4,256 career hits. That was what he ended up with, so 86 was his final season. What we used to do, we used to have a little trick to find out if it was a rookie card or not back in the day. We used to flip the card over. And we would just see how many years of Major League Service they had. So you can see he has one year with the A's. So that would always tell us that it was his rookie card. Um, because obviously they weren't making cards of players just sitting in the minor leagues. What's up with this Jeff L Latte upside down card? Almost looks like he purposely did that himself with that devious smile. But yeah, that was the trick that we used to see if it was rookie card or not before there was rookie card emblems. Now there's those logos on there to tell you if it's a rookie card or not, which are very useful. Let's see if we can find. So basically, just looking for Barry Larkin and Jose Canseco right now. We'll see if we find them. Getting a lot of repeats, but you know, you'd expect that with so many cards to be opened up. This is the flipped upside down with Jeff Laddie leading things off. That pack. Got to keep an eye out for that Giants card again, or Roy Lee Jackson. How about four Barry Bonds rookies? That would be crazy. Three Barry Bonds rookie cards for somebody out there. You got to figure if you send all three of those in, maybe at least one of them would come back a PSA 10, which would be pretty awesome. Three packs left to go to find Kinseka or Barry Larkin. Hopefully everybody's having a nice Thursday wherever you're at. Here on the East Coast, at least in Pennsylvania, it is raining buckets right now. It's pouring. And uh, I'm actually going to have to treacher or venture out in this, these treacherous conditions to go pick up a pizza for lunch. Uh, should be ready in about nine minutes. So that's perfect timing here as we go down through the last three packs of this giant um, rack box. Lots and lots of 87 tops cards. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Again, if you'd like to win all the cards from this video, please like the video. BJ Surhoff rookie card. Like the video. Make sure you're subscribed and comment telling me your favorite card, your favorite yogiism, or maybe uh, if you like this set a lot, you can tell us where you'd rank this in your top sets of all time. That's one video that I would, you know, probably want to do one of these days, ranking the baseball card designs in order from best to worst. And 87 tops would be definitely in the amongst the leaders. We'll just say that. I don't know if it would be top. Five or not, I'd have to go through them all. For me, I probably would be a little bit biased. Um, I probably would discount some of the um, card releases from the 2000s when I was not really collecting that much. Got to find the seam there. There we go. If you tear the seam open, you can get the whole pack open. It wasn't collecting really at all. Probably stopped in 98, so... Fisk and Trammel once more. We already had this pack. Robin Yount, Hall of Famer. There's the Yastrzemski... Just go through these and see. Maybe there's a brand new face in here. Roger Clemens once more. Pretty much had the same exact pack already. Sean Dunstan, probably if he had control and maybe some secondary pitches, could have been a lights-out closer or something like that during this time frame. He used to be able to get the ball over to first base with plenty of zip on it, probably approaching 100 miles an hour. That guy had an arm for sure. Uh, Frank DePino told me a story about Sean Dunstan in the dugout. He told me tons of stories, and I think I can share this. I, there was a president in the dugout. I think it was Ronald Reagan, and Sean Dunstan was really, really, really trying to get the Secret Service to show off their <laughs> their weaponry. He's like, let me see your gun. Just let me see it. Just take it out. I, I want to check it out. <laughs> and they're like, no, we can only t if we're going to take it out, we got to got to use it. That's the only time the gun that uh, ever comes out. So Sean Dunstan, quite a character. Frank DePino shared tons of stories, tons of great stuff. A lot of them didn't make the video. Uh, we had, I don't know, we probably spent maybe like three or four hours together before filming, had dinner together, and he just, man, was, was he a great source of um, just baseball knowledge. Here we go, last pack. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed this. We'll try to get this last pack in the books. Looks like it's a repeat with Sambring and Palmero again. Uh, again, make sure you subscribe. You can win all of these cards. We'll send them in a priority mail flat rate box and check us out. Looks like our next live stream is going to be Sunday with Stadium Club starting around uh, dinner time. Then after that, there's a Burt Blylevin Hall of Famer. We'll be live once again on what, the following Wednesday. Bowman Crumb will be coming out. And then the week after that, we have Alan and Ginter. So lots of new releases. You know that we'll have them all to open up for you. Um, 
Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single video. Tomorrow we'll have Face Off. Friday, this Saturday is the Saturday Showdown. Looks like we'll be doing the high end Panini Immaculate, which should be really, really fun. So I'm going to go pick up my pizza for lunch right now. I hope you have a great rest of your Thursday, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Good night, everybody.